welcome to Below the Belt Show, attorney extraordinaire, reality TV personality extraordinaire from CBS Survivor and the amazing race, and a good friend of mine, the wonderful, the amazing Eliza Orleans. Eliza, good to have you on our quarantine edition of Below the Belt Show. Hi, really good to be here. I mean, I, I wish I were anywhere else except for in my apartment where I've been for the last 33 <laughs> days. But other than that, I'm really happy to be chatting yes. with you guys. But you, of course, counting, right? yes, of course, counting. but you, of course, you recognize some of the panelists through our introductions. You already know one of the guys here, I'm sure. Yes, yeah, of course. Yeah, <laughs> we of have course. to bring on the foremost reality TV ex expert, Merch Jaffer, to join the panel. We'd also like to introduce you to my co-host, Chachi McFly, the king of the 80s. What's going on. Hi. Also, the wonderful and talented actress, singer extraordinaire, Vanessa Meadows. Hi. Hi. Nice to meet you. Me <laughs> too. <laughs> so, Eliza, first of all, obviously, you mentioned quarantine for 33 days. How is it in Manhattan? Obviously, we're, we're not, um, the three of us aren't in New York. Myself, Chachi, Vanessa, and Mertz are in Toronto and Maryland, respectively. What's it like in Manhattan right now with dealing with the pandemic? Um, you know, we're in one of the, like, epicenters of COVID right now. So there are just, you know, tons of people infected, tons of people dying. Um, it's, I think it's, it's something that people are starting to take as seriously as they need to be. But I think there was a bit of time there where we should have been locking down in a much more serious way um, early on and could have prevented thousands of deaths. And there are still things that our elected leaders could be doing to prevent more people from dying. But, um, you know, day after day, like, it seems like we're headed in the right direction now, finally. How do you think uh, Governor Andrew Cuomo is handling um, everything going on in New York? Um, listen, compared to Trump, um, I think that that's a pretty easy comparison to, to make someone look good. But, um, you know, Cuomo has the opportunity to be a hero right now. He could do a bunch of things such as, you know, releasing thousands of people from our jails and prisons, which are one of the highest infection rates in the world right now. And if he were to do that, he would save so many thousands of lives. You know, there are people who are aging, who are medically vulnerable, and he could release them um, who are not just going to be infecting themselves, but, but, you know, getting the people who work in our jails and prisons infected and their families and the communities and going to the same hospitals. And, and so he has a real opportunity right now. And, and I hope that, you know, all the calls from advocates and activists and, and folks um, will resonate with him and he will do the right thing. Yeah, talk, talk a, a lot about a lot on his shoulders right now as governor is the number one um, state affected by the pandemic. So, man, my heart, yes. my hat, hat goes off to, to Governor Cuomo for handling handling it very, very difficult, I imagine. So, but we want to change the tune a little bit, uh, put a little smiles on our faces because Mertz has been dying to talk about Survivor 40. <laughs> Man, uh, yeah, and if we could start with that, Eliza, because you're a two time sure. player of that game. And, um, first of all, wow, Mertz, uh, I know you're excited to talk about this. Well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm just gonna start with a very controversial thing, like right off the top, okay? Like, everyone knows, Eliza knows, I'm here for the game, okay? I always complain about the family visit, everybody always gives me, oh, you weren't there, you don't know how much we missed them, whatever, whatever, okay, fine, I get that I'm in the minority on that. But 30 minutes of the greatest season in the history of the game was spent on the family visit. I, I thought it was a little bit much, okay? And then they rushed the second half to try and get all that game in there to compensate for it. I wasn't down. I didn't like it. Uh, I'm sorry. Actually, I'm not. <laughs> sorry, not sorry, huh? Yeah. Uh, I'm sure Eliza has a different opinion on this because we fight about the the family visit every single season. So yeah, but so so for, let's mention uh, to to of course Chachi Vanessa. This was the first time in Survivor history that the loved ones uh, were on the show, but it wasn't a challenge. Everybody on all the remaining contestants, and even the, the contestants on Extinction Island, got to see their loved ones, and not only just one loved one. An unprecedented um, two to three loved ones. I think they could bring up to three four. to four family, yeah, four family four, members, yeah. mm -hmm. um, which I'm surprised some um, contestants only picked like one person to, to join them. Uh, uh, but uh, yeah, it was the first time we saw entire families uh, on uh, Survivor. So Eliza, what are your thoughts on that? Um, so 
Mertz knows I love the family visit. Mm -hmm. I like, I'm, I, I mean, I don't know. Call me a sap. I love the family visit. I like totally understand the up. feeling <laughs> of it. Oh, I, I mean, tears <laughs> always, I mean, I think yeah. back to when I was told that I was going to have a family visit. No, I, I was told I was going to have a Skype call with my mom. You know, our, our loved ones were there on video and we got to have like a one minute chat with them. And I, I said to somebody, I feel like they're here, but Jeff like really like played it so well and convinced us and had us do the one minute thing. And, and he's like, all right, you're competing in a memory challenge for like a one hour chat with your loved one. And I was like, memory challenge, got this. Uh, and so I was excited. <laughs> and then, uh, but Julie was really tough competition, but I beat her in a tiebreaker. And, um, and then Jeff goes, Eliza, like, wouldn't it be better if your mom were here? Susan, come on out. And I was like, what? No, oh my God. And I just start like bawling, <laughs> bawling. And it's, I mean, I've gone longer in my life without seeing my mom. Like I've, you know, I'm not like a person who cries every time I see my family. It's just, I, there is something about the total deprivation out there where you are like emotionally deprived, physically deprived, you're exhausted, you're hungry. Like think about your worst day, how emotional you are at the end of the day. Yeah. If like you haven't slept the night before and you're hungry, like you're hangry, you know, you're like, but, but then you multiply that times like a hundred or times 30 days of it or, or yeah. whatever it was when, yeah. when our, when our loved ones came out and like the, it's just an overwhelming emotional experience. But for once, I actually will agree with Mertz that like, if they were going to spend 30 for minutes once. on it, <laughs> then give us a two hour episode That's or something. Exactly. There you go. I was really frustrated that I didn't understand entirely, like why the vote went down the way it did, why the lines were drawn the way they were, exactly. how we ended up with like a thing, how Jeremy knew he had to leave. Like, and I just wish like Mertz is right. Like I so cherish like watching these amazing players play. That yeah. It sucks to, to like feel shortchanged on that, but I love watching the family visit stuff. I just wish the episode had been two hours. Yeah, no, I, I can, I can co-sign that too. Like if they had extended the episode by the half an hour that we lost in the family visit, then I'm totally down. But like the other thing that's understated about this episode is how good it was. Like that was one of the best tribals I've seen again this season. It's really delivering. And Eliza is right. We just didn't get to see all of the politics behind what happened. And I feel like we definitely were deprived of seeing that, you know? Yeah, my, my thoughts are, you know, the whole family visit challenge is a challenge. And obviously they want to reward everybody. They're, you know, winner. They're all winners in this game. So everyone got to spend time with their families. But just to see the emotion when um, some of the contestants aren't able to spend time with their loved ones, that, that kind of added a little twist of drama. And of course, when well, you they're not pick... voting people out this season. So like, yeah. why bother not making some people not get a family visit? Like mm -hmm. it's, you know. But they had no choice. They had no choice to have those, like, they wouldn't have gotten half these people back unless there was some sort of guarantee that, you know, you're out first, like, that's it, see ya, you know? Like, I feel like they had no other choice but to do the Edge of Extinction thing, to get the caliber of the people. You would have never seen Amber on this show had they not done that. You would have not, you, I, you probably uh, wouldn't have okay. Prob you know, like Sandra, you would have seen because she had no interest in the Edge of Extinction, but I feel right. like a lot of them you would not have seen. Ethan, like, what, like, is there any point in going back and risking your legacy as a million dollar winner by being the first kicked off on an all winners like Hunger Games type of season. Yes, because it's two million instead of one million. <laughs> but also, <laughs> first, man, like to I me right yeah. now, Jason I like, you know, you walk into a mall and you say, I am a former survivor winner. Right. Now, all these people are going to have to go in the same mall and say, Yeah, I won survivor back in 2004. Oh, how'd you do on this new one? Well, I, I, I was voted off first. Like, it's not the same, you know, it doesn't have the same ring to it, I think. Yeah. yeah. Especially the queen, Sandra. Yeah. My gosh. Talk about like some of the worst gameplay I've ever seen ever on Survivor. It was uh, giving up an immunity idol, which I don't know. And, uh, but you know, Denise is still in there. So, <laughs> Wait, are we, and, are we no, more your co host? Because I feel like we just really turned this into like Survivor 101. <laughs> no, I'm like, That's... I have a question I want to ask. Yes, yes please. <laughs> <laughs> so, Eliza, when you won that time with your mom, one on one. Um, were there other family members there oh, just in case? Yes. Like what happened what happened to everyone else's like on standby family members? They got to come out and give everyone a hug and then they had to go. Okay. Oh. 
And oh. then, but then it was a surprise and they actually, um, let, like we ended up competing mm. in the immunity challenge with our loved ones. Oh, that's amazing. That's yeah. so cool. Yeah, I yeah. like personally, I cannot handle watching the family stuff, but I, I know it's important, but I usually like fast forward through it. <laughs> Just because <laughs> I don't have that emotional connection. Like you do. Yeah. You know what I mean? But I yeah. understand it's important and I'm glad it happened. Yeah. It, for a viewer, like from a viewer standpoint, it's completely mm. boring to me unless there's another reason that they're there. Yeah. You know. Okay, that's fair. So, what do you guys think of um, tonight's uh, eliminated contestants for the Make second that. time? Tyson, who was, uh, I guess, the only OG, because you know it's kind of like divided between the new school and the old school. Um, Tyson had the second chance, came back from edge of edge of extinction, and then gets voted out tonight. Um, yeah. Man, I was really rooting for uh, for somebody from the old school to to make it far in the game. Um. Eliza, do you want to? You can go first. I have a lot to say about this episode. Well, oh, as far as the um, old school, new school, though. Yeah. Specific. Yeah. Yeah. Like, as an old school player, like, I am, you know, I'm OG. So it's, it's pretty weird to, like, see all of our old school folks, like, not representing. But I actually think that it's also because they're obviously the biggest threats. They're obviously the people yeah. who, like, are going to excel in the game who are the like strategic threats who are the um challenge threats uh i do think that tonight though if it had come down to like if kim had played her idol correctly and sophie had gone home i would have been much more upset than tyson going home so i'm happy with how the episode turned out because i was like my heart was well sophie's a very good friend of yours that we should mention that right yeah (laughs) so there's some by the way (laughs) <laughs> There's some bias there for sure. Um, um, I think that I think the producers on your topic of old school versus new school, I think a very big mistake. The only mistake I feel like that was made uh, on this season was made at the beginning. I think that the old school people were not given any kind of chance. You know, like you stick Rob on a tribe with like Parvati and like Ethan, and that's it. Everybody else is new school. Like you're putting like like what what chance do you have? And it's the same on the other side too. Like the old school people really. I feel like weren't given a fair shake. If they wanted this season to truly be the best ever, they would have had all those people, Ewell, Tyson, Rob, Parvati, Amber, Sandra, all of them on one tribe and all the new school people on one tribe. Then it's a showdown. You know, right now. Yeah, that's I just, a good I just, call. I don't, I don't get the no, reason. I don't, I don't get why you like set up all these people to fail, put them on extinction when you knew that's what was going to happen. You know, you knew that like Rob and Parvati. They should have done that, Merge. Yes. Yes, old yes they should have. Yeah. And it's the only fault that I have with this season, you know? So you knew yeah. what was going to happen. That's completely fair. And one thing, what was the contestant that came back late on Edge of Extinction and actually won the game? Chris, Chris Underwood. Underwood. Okay, Chris Underwood. So I really hope that, I mean, as much as I love the old school players, I, I, I did not like that season because I thought he was the most undeserving winner in the history of Survivor, coming back so late in the game and then winning. Um, so the next, uh, I guess, person on Edge of Extinction that comes back, I hope comes back pretty soon, not later in the game. What do you no, guys think? I think, think someone comes back at like Final Four or something. It's a like, Final Four. Like... They're they're saying someone comes back like really. Do you, late. Do you think that's fair? I don't think that's fair. Sure. It's so stupid. They should Edge of Extinction shouldn't exist. If it does, it should end at the merge or whatever. It should have ended at Tyson. That's it. Give one more person a chance. Let them all go home. I, I don't know why. I mean, it's like so someone comes back and wins. I mean, they're not they're not playing the game. Are they technically still playing the game? Well, the part I don't like. I don't know. You're, you're giving them all this time with the jury, which is the part that I have a problem with, right? Like you're basically right. giving them like right. all this chance to like explain their game, explain their motives, explain right. why they voted the way. The people that are still in the game never had the chance to sort of like fraternize with the jury for all these weeks, you know. So I think inherently, I think it's like unfair is my biggest problem. That being said, I am completely biased. Like the season where they first did the Edge of Extinction, I hated it. These people have lost. Same when, like, Lillian and Burton back on season seven, when they came back in that whole thing. I didn't like that either. But all of a sudden, I'm singing a different tune this season because all my favorites are on edge. So all I want is somebody to come back. So I don't know. I mean, I guess it it, it depends on the season. And I also think that I have not a lot of credibility on this point. So, <laughs> <laughs> so who are you rooting for now, Eliza? What do you mean, Sophie? 
Oh, so it's, it's so it's so it's hands Sophie down. All the way. Sophie all the way. Oh, yeah, of course, yeah. <laughs> right on. Um, and I think she's crushing it this season. She's just been absolutely amazing. I don't see any way she doesn't win. Really? Not, I don't. No, she's she's too she's too embedded now. Like this was a key point for her to get past. Now it's like just a room full of her allies. Like you could see the power that she had when she got everyone at the tribal council. Like her five. She's just like, well, why are we whispering? Let's just go over here. We've got like. That is the mark of somebody that has a real hold on the game. Like, you don't make a move like that unless you know everyone is under your control. What I found to be the most interesting is what happened to Nick in tonight's episode. Nick, you know, remember that he was the one who, like, sided up with, like, Michelle. They, like, voted out, like, Yule. You know, like, I thought that was a whole thing. Why did Nick all of a sudden notice that the power was shifting and not stick with, like, sort of Michelle and go with them? That, I thought, was a very interesting dynamic tonight was the play of Nick. Right? Why? Like, how how did they convince him? Like, why did he all of a sudden go with them? You know, that was a weird thing, and that's why I wanted the family visit to be cut short, because they didn't show anything about how, like, Nick was a free agent, how Nick was, like, recruited. Like, we didn't see any of that. And his was the most critical vote, in my opinion, tonight. Yeah, I guess you bring up a very good point. I mean, we didn't know um, how many were specifically in each alliance till like, for the Tribal Council, really. Yeah, you and know, splitting so. the vote, how brilliant Eliza was that split. Yeah. I didn't see that split coming at all. Just I didn't m- think Sarah was going to use her steal a vote when, when once G- she let Jeremy go first, when they were like playing that like back and forth, back and forth. I was like, oh, if he goes first and walks out, she's going to save her steal a vote. And then she was like, nope, using it anyhow. I was like, damn, that was a good move. But Do then think- they screwed up the split. Wait, I, I want to go back to the steal a vote. Like, she didn't really have to use it, or did she? Because she could have she saved didn't that. Have to. That's it what I yeah. Five four, but she, they wouldn't have been able to split their vote. But I thought they were going to do three 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 in case somebody played an idol. But then, mm-hmm. if Kim had played her idol for Tyson, Sophie would have gone home because they screwed That's it up. Right. Somebody flipped. I don't know who, or I don't really understand. But you can't, I can't, we can't blame Kim, though, because Kim played it on Denise because she saw that, like, that's who they took the vote away from, right? So, like, right. I do, see the, I oh, do yeah. see the logic. Like, Kim, I thought, made a very logical move. I don't think Kim made a bad move. People saying okay. that made a bad move. Yeah, I think it was very logical. Totally. I mean, well, you have to also think about Kim has an idol. Sandra gave away her idol. Could they have voted for Kim? You know, like... I, I think people have to think about themselves at this point in the game. I don't know. And play the idols themselves. I don't know, but I guess it didn't matter at the end. Who? Here's a question for the whole room. I want to know who you would be satisfied by with a win. You know, like, I'm all of my people are gone now, right? So, like, I'm just trying to figure out, like, who do I attach my flag to? And I'm having a hard time. Like, I like the game that Sophie is playing. I like the game that, like, Sarah is playing. Um, I kind of like the game that, like, Jeremy is playing. But really, there's no, like, clear, this is the guy. This is the one that's got to win, you know? The, Tony's, I'm not getting... Tony's playing a good game, too. Yeah. So, okay, so, so, so here's what my husband and I do. Okay. So we have, <laughs> in all reality show shows that we watch, we have horses, right? So, like, it's like a horse race. So we have horses. So uh, usually there's the player you want to win, there's the player you think is going to win. There's the player you think is going to go out first, the last, the longest, blah, 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 blah. Um, and that kind of helps when the person that you wanted to win does not stick around. Because you, have, you have these other, other options horses, right. yeah, yeah. that answer different <clears throat> questions. And okay. so it, because it, we love Big Brother, okay? Like we love, love Big Brother. <laughs> And when we first started watching it, it was literally emotionally painful when your person would get kicked off, right? Because they're real people and you're watching yeah. it real time and <laughs> you do get emotionally invested. Um, and so like, you know, we had the, the live stuff we were watching. It was like, it was a little too far, but <laughs> um, so we, it, it was almost like this, just this thing that sort of evolved over time where, you know, the next season we watched, it was like, okay, that was too painful last season. Who do I want to win? Who do I think is going to win? Who don't I want to win? You know, blah, blah, blah. So um, that's how we do it. And it actually makes watching shows like that even more fun. Yeah. I was curious, um, how are they going to do Big Brother this season if they are going to do Big Brother? Obviously, they're violating the six feet away rule, but everybody's quarantined in the house for they're three months. They're not doing it. They're just not good. They're just foregoing Big Brother this summer. I okay. just assume it's not happening. Yeah. I think oh. that they'll just end up 
they're not. I mean, they pushed Survivor. They they suspended production of Race. Um, uh, they cut Big Brother Canada. I I was telling I was them right four weeks that. in. Yeah, four okay. weeks in. Just yeah. Just, I mean, like, Amazing Race is all about traveling to different countries, and of course, we have Amazing Race alumni here. So, um, yeah, that's that's just the crazy crazy world that we're in now, especially for reality television. I did um, watch how Big Brother. <clears throat> I think Big Brother Canada broke the news to their contestants, so yeah. I thought that that yeah. was really yeah. that was really well done. And then I heard that Big Brother Germany totally effed it up. Yeah. Um, uh, I don't know. I don't know. Like, I mean, I don't want to. I I do think I, I'm really on the fence on this one. Like, you raise an interesting point. You know, like the point of that show is to completely cut them off from society and watch what happens. And if you're gonna stick to what that show is. There, in my opinion, there are no exceptions, save for like a family member like passing away or something while you're in the house. Like, no, you know, like if the world completely burned down, yeah, then maybe tell them. But I, I was really on the fence. I didn't know what the right move was. You know, like you the have to. The world is burning people. down. Yeah, I think you definitely say so. It, I don't know. They were like the level. last people in the whole country to find out. Like already, it was like, mm. I don't know. I would have been really pissed. Yeah. I don't know. Because at the end of the day, it's just a it's just a show, you know. Like it is it's a human experiment, but it's it's also just a show. So I think you know when it comes mm -hmm. to that, it's important to let them. But then, yeah. but then, where is the line? Then where is the line for when you break it to them? Is it a certain number of deaths? Is it when like the border is closed? Like how do, and who makes that distinction? I guess when you realize that a tsunami is coming. Right. And I don't. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Because I'll tell you. I'll tell you. Here's the part you don't know. Is like. They only told them after an order went in that, like, people here were not allowed to, like, basically go to work in, like, large groups of people so that the production crew could not technically work on the show. And that's oh. ultimately what resulted in them telling them, you know? So okay. I think that, like, I think it's interesting to sort of see, like, when they chose, you know? It wasn't that it was only when, you know, I don't want to say when the hand was forced, but certainly, yeah. like, you know, they waited until they had to, for sure. Mm -hmm. I mean, right? for me, I was kind of jealous of them not knowing. I mean, how great would that be? Yeah. And you're in, in the, the house. It's worrying about quarantine. Yeah. 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 So of course we have to talk. Except about the for other people are going home and coming back, and and this is like it's the same yeah. issue in our jails and prisons. Not to just like you know go back to something dark, but it's true. Like the the it's not like the people who were incarcerated were the people who brought it in. They were the ones who were locked up in right. there, and and then other people who are going yeah. home yeah. into the communities are coming back and infecting them, <laughs> and they're trapped there. And so yeah. not to compare Big Brother to jail at all, because I mean, it's <laughs> obvious it, it, what yeah. a gift, like, but, um, but it's just like, you know, the, the chances yeah. of infecting people who are like put in one place versus, um, yeah. versus like whatever you're putting their lives in danger, potentially. Through no fault of your own, which is, I think that's a, that's an, that's a really good point too, right? Like you're right. Like they didn't contract it. They didn't bring it in. So right. Right. Of course, the um, Survivor um, finale will be just like uh -huh. we're doing right here via uh, Zoom or Skype or whatever method they're going to do. Uh, the is greatest it, is... pop culture tragedy of our lifetime. Uh, Al, please, yeah. report, is that <laughs> from now on? <laughs> is the, the Survivor finale being, being yeah, this honestly, method? Yeah, because people are like, oh, you know, this is such hyperbole, Mertz. You're really like, you know, it's it's a much bigger thing. And I'm go, you know what? Yeah. Like, for a reality fan, yeah, that is totally true this is the 20th like year of the show it's the 40th right. season it is the all winter season how long has it taken for them to actually do this and right. now after what i believe might be the greatest season of all time we're gonna get stuck with this like so uh tell us uh how you how you feel about like winning from your house you know like it just doesn't have the same <laughs> I like, know. Day, you know but 20 years in the making won't be interviewing nine-year-olds in the audience yes yes <laughs> How about Sia? Do you think they'll call in Sia to give a... Uh, a 100. Uh, Sia's going to call in and... <laughs> and she's going to like, like e-transfer her money to whoever it is this time. <laughs> All right. Uh, we got to talk about Eliza because, Eliza, you have something really important to talk about. Uh, you're one of the field candidates for the 2021 New York County District Attorney race. Um, and, um, of course, uh, you're raising money uh, for your campaign for uh, for running for district attorney, which we, we of course have to endorse Eliza Orleans as district attorney. Thank Manhattan. you. Yes. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Absolutely. Um, yeah, it's you know, but more than that, like we're fighting for we're fighting to change um, our our criminal legal system. You know, like right now, 
especially in New York, we don't have a, a, a justice system. We have a criminal legal system that's cruel and unjust and that disproportionately, you know, locks up people of color, poor people, LGBTQIA folks, you know, and instead of, you know, giving people the opportunities they need for treatment, for rehabilitation, for all of these things. Mm -hmm. And the current Manhattan DA has perpetuated this, like, lock them up, throw away the key mentality and not thought about the the real impact that has on human beings. Mm -hmm. And I've spent the last 11 years as a public defender fighting for justice, fighting on behalf of human beings. I've represented over 3,000 people charged with crimes in this city and, and watched as they've been treated unfairly, what they've been locked up. And, and the fact of the matter is like, you know, locking someone up, even if it's for three months, three weeks, or even three days, does not make us safer. In fact, it makes us less safe because the, all the data shows that like, once you lock someone up, even if it's just for a period of 48 hours, you mm-hmm. are, they are so much more likely to get rearrested or to reoffend because then you're, of, of course they are, because you're destabilizing their entire lives. Yeah. You know, you're, you're, you're locked up for 48 hours. What happens? Maybe you, you don't show up for work. So you lose your job. Then you can't pay your rent. So you get kicked out of your apartment. I mean, if you're a single parent, your kid gets taken into foster care. And so then you're released. And of course you end up back like through our criminal legal system, yeah. because what else, like, like you're set up to fail. And, and so, yeah. you know, as someone who's been a public defender, like, and mm-hmm. I, I just want to be a different kind of prosecutor. And I want to be the kind of prosecutor who has seen the other side of the criminal justice system and its impact on people and, and families and lives. And I want to um, bring, you know, bold transformational change to the Manhattan DA's office. Yeah. I love that. I think that's amazing. Thanks. I'm so inspired. Because <laughs> you're, you're saying exactly what needs to be said. You know, a lot of people don't mm-hmm. know about that. You know, they yeah. just think, oh, you're a criminal. Don't don't be a criminal. But they don't understand the under underlying reasons and what the causes are and um and how pervasive it can be. You know, it's not necessarily a choice. And it's not that you're a bad human if you make unlawful decisions when you're in a survival situation and but also the fact of the matter is we over criminalize things in such a in such a massive way so like when we think of like someone who's committed a crime you know and the the fact that we've criminalized you know that that the minor low-level drug possession is still criminalized in in new york and it's it's like we're, we're locking people up who are truly i mean drug addiction is now is it's substance use disorder it's classified it's a disease and so someone who's recidivating because they, they, they're using and they don't want to, and they want to get better, like are not even given the opportunity for treatment. They're just right. locked up. And then what, like, right. how does that right. help anyone? Yeah. 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 I certainly agree with that. Especially if some people are still locked up for marijuana use, which is legal in most states now, yep. which is insane, yep. uh, especially med- yeah. medicinal marijuana. And uh, I don't know, of course, anything nonviolent crime, they should reevaluate uh, the justice system for, for mm-hmm. those that are incarcerated Absolutely. for nonviolent crime. I certainly concur with that. Where, where can, uh, Eliza, where can people uh, learn more about that online for your campaign? You have a, oh. you have a, you have a, you have something set up, right? You have a GoFundMe? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. People can, people can go to ElizaOrlins.com. There you go. It's E-L-I-Z-A-O-R-L-I-N-S.com to sign up, get involved, learn more. Um, volunteer, donate, you know, would love for everyone to get involved. Like this is, it's so, it's so interesting because I've been saying for years that this is a matter of life and death, that this is, this is the fight of our lifetimes, et cetera, et cetera. And now all of a sudden, and I could never have predicted this, but like a few weeks into my campaign, it has literally become a matter of life and death that there are people who are, who are locked up right now who are accused of a crime meaning they have not yet been convicted of anything. And supposedly we have a presumption of innocence in this country, you know, innocent until proven guilty, like have not yet been found guilty, have not pled guilty. And yet they sit in jail on an accusation. And right. of course now they're, they're at risk of dying, you know, with mm-hmm. these, with these COVID infection rates being what they are. Like, can we bring we're, up we're willing to. Harvey Weinstein and your thoughts on that? Obviously he was convicted of, of rape and sexual assault and he had contracted COVID and he was incarcerated. Um, 
does your opinion change on someone like a Harvey Weinstein? Well, so, you know, uh, Harvey Weinstein could have been prosecuted six years ago. There were recordings, there was categorical evidence that the Manhattan District Attorney's Office had that Harvey Weinstein um, had committed crimes in New York City against women, and he did not bring that prosecution. And, you know, tons of, he, he's constantly given breaks to wealthy and well-connected individuals while not really caring about the rest of us. And, and Harvey Weinstein is a perfect example of that. And like, you know, yes, he's finally been held accountable, um, but, but you know, this is a person who could have been off the streets or could have been, you know, being held accountable six years earlier, and the Manhattan DA's office didn't bring those charges. Interesting. Eliza, we got to talk about your relationship with Elizabeth Warren. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's so, I mean, I think that's cool, first of all, that when you posted photos of her, okay, I thought, oh, she just met her, but you actually uh, uh, become friends with Elizabeth Warren. You've endorsed that Elizabeth Warren. That is an Warren. overstatement. No, that it's is an overstatement. Yeah. <laughs> um, listen, listen, Liz and I, we go way back. No, um, uh, Liz, I was a huge fan of her candidacy. You know, yeah. I, I really believed in the things that she yeah. was fighting for, and I think big structural change is what we need in this country, both on a local level, federal level, national level. You know, we mm-hmm. we need big structural change, and and so I, I deeply believed in her, and plus, you know. I love a good policy nerd. I've got a plan for that was like my love language. Um, and she's, she's amazing. And I think um, she, she very powerfully endorsed Joe Biden today. She did, today, actually, and, yeah. And um, was on Rachel Maddow tonight. And, and when Rachel asked her if she would accept um, the vice presidential position, if it were offered to her, she said yes. So VP Warren it is. Wow. Hopefully. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah, because he did say, Joe Biden did say that he would choose a female vice presidential candidate. So um, running mate. So we'll see what happens there. Of course, also Bernie Sanders is now endorsing Joe as, of course, President Obama as well. Um, So we'll see how this plays out and and how interesting will it be uh, come November if things are still like it is today or they have to implement online voting and make that secure I don't know. I mean, I know you're Canadian, Mertz, and you're not going to vote. But... No, I mean, I, I mean yeah. <laughs> but, uh... I, I mean, I was already, I was just thinking of the same point. Like, how is that all yeah. going to work? You know, like, so, I, yeah. I think there's a lot of question marks, a lot of question marks. I don't think yeah. it's secure yet. I don't think online voting is secure yet. No, no. and vote by mail is, is you know, our, we're not even sure about the status of the U.S. Postal Service these days. So yeah, it's right. pretty, con- it's extremely concerning. Whew, we're kind of crazy, crazy ties right here. Yeah, and like, I mean, so. I think that it's obviously going to play a result. You know, it's going to have a, an effect on the result, too. You know, like, I just, I think that this is a very big topic, like how this vote is going to work. Uh, yeah. And I really think this is going to be our main headline, like going in, not even so much about the candidates, you know. Right. So, I mean, we'll right. see. Absolutely. Well, Eliza, wow, we thank you so much for being our, our for feature guest on Below the Belt. You look amazing, <laughs> by the way. Oh, thanks. thanks. You look beautiful, I'm, even yeah. in quarantine mode. Oh, just, <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Eliza, by the way, I guys. She, Eliza, she, I signed up on your website. There you go. Awesome. There you go. <laughs> thanks. Gotta attend you Eliza's. <laughs> Halloween party. She throws the best Halloween parties. I, <laughs> I love, love your Hall- Halloween. I'm, I mean, who knows what the status will be? Like, will we be Please. gathering in crowded bars come October? It's just not. Um, trick or treating. Well. What about, yeah, what about trick or treating? How's trick or treating going to work? What about door knocking for campaigns? Yeah. Field organizing. Like, you yeah. know, right now That's it's like the idea if I went and knocked thing. on someone's door, they would. I don't yeah. know what they would do, but they wouldn't be happy. Yeah. Um, so you're, we're just trying to figure out how to operate digitally. And, um, you know, I'm out there on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, um, Eliza Orleans on Twitter, E Orleans on Instagram, and Eliza Orleans for NY, F O R N Y um, on Facebook. Thanks for That's the my point. candidate page. I love it. Love it. Eliza, if you could let us know a little promo for us, let us know who you are. Uh, throughout Amazing Race and Survivor, and of course, uh, you're you're running for uh, district attorney, and then throughout, you're on Below the Belt show. Okay. Hi, I'm Eliza Orleans. I was on Survivor Vanuatu and Survivor Fans vs. Favorites and The Amazing Race. I am a public defender running for Manhattan District Attorney, and I'm here on Below the Belt show. Yay, one take wonder. 
I'm a reality TV contestant. You know, that's, like, <laughs> we, we all do, we always do it in one take. Like, Aww. it's so weird. Like recording my, you know, doing other stuff when you're like do, doing another take. I'm like, what do you mean another take? It's just. <laughs> I was really rooting for you on Amazing Race. You and Corinne, my gosh. Uh, the little bikes. Yeah, it's from those little bikes. I know. Those All the damn years bikes. I spent not riding a motorcycle. <laughs> deliberately not learning how to ride in all the countries and travels I've done. I've never learned. And it definitely came back to to bite me. But... Eliza, I don't, know, I don't know who you're running against in this thing. But man, I worry for whoever that person is when they have to see your eye roll. Oh, I have to control that, though. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the best eye roll in Survivor yeah, history. Yes, yes. Yeah. And of I course, one of, to... and of one of the best quotes ever, it's just the fucking stick. Was that, was that the quote? What? I don't it's know a fucking stick. That. It's a fucking stick. Oh, my God. Adam Klein playing, trying to play the podium. With, <laughs> I mean, my heart, my heart. That was amazing. <laughs> Do you not remember that, Eliza? Are you trying to remember, uh, say that you don't remember it for a, cer- oh, a no, certain reason? Oh, no, of course not. What do you mean? Okay. How could I not remember it? <laughs> okay. <laughs> She's running for district attorney. She's I'm just trying watch. to dissociate. You got you to watch your F-bombs. I get it. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Eliza, exactly. thank you so much for, for uh, Skype of to course. Below the Belt. You're amazing. Of course.